Halloween 4. On Halloween night in 1988, what your parents didn't tell you is that a psychopathic juggernaut named Michael Myers went on a killing spree in Bum Illinois. So join me, Cringe Conrad, for the highlights of Halloween 4. When a killer that's slow as shit can somehow chase down Usain Bolt. The movie begins on a stormy night with two bozos in an ambulance picking up Michael Myers from the asylum to transfer him to another asylum. And on the way down to the dungeons, their friendly chauffeur tells the story of the mad lad they're fixing to transport. Yeah, the one you're picking up? A decade ago, Halloween night. He murdered 16 people, maybe more. But his doctor, of all people, shot him six times. Then he set him on fire. Both of them nearly burned to death. Dear God. I wonder if that'll make them change their minds about this whole transfer thing. Well, I guess not. Of course, on their cozy ride home, it takes about 10 seconds for the sleeping giant to show signs of life, while the idiots sit within arm's reach. And when Michael gets his paws on you, there's no getting out. No, I still don't understand. <laughs> Next, we meet Jamie, a little munchkin who seems to know what's about to happen, as well as her foster sister, Rachel, a teenager who spends most of the movie dealing with boy trouble. And also, there's the family dog, Sunday, who likes to hang out on the couch. Oh my god, he's such a good boy. Anyway, the crew gets ready for bed, but something tells me Michael's somewhere close by. Listen to me, Trank. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Started out with blood, man. Fifty K and drugs on. Talk shit and put drugs on. Oh, dear God. Well, it turns out it was all just a bad dream. For now. The following morning on Halloween, Sunday and Jamie are chilling on the bed. Oh my goodness, look at this wonderful little man. Soon after, we meet our true hero, Dr. Loomis, a crazy old bastard that's all too familiar with Michael's shenanigans in Halloween 1 and 2, which we'll probably highlight at some point in the future. Anyway, Loomis tracks the mad lad to the crash site and informs the local morons they've made the biggest mistake of their lives before following the killer's trail to a nearby auto shop. Hey, Gar, how about a 916 socket over here? Who said that? Hello? God damn! Michael? Why now? I knew this day would come. God damn you. Okay, well as badass as Loomis is, he's not exactly a sniper, as I'm pretty sure he struggled to hit the broad side of a tow truck. But it doesn't really matter, because spoiler alert, bullets are more like bug bites to Michael Myers when he's in his prime on Halloween. Back at school with Jamie, she's busy getting bullied by a bunch of little jerks for being an orphan. And I'm gonna take a second here to be totally serious. If you've ever bullied or are currently bullying someone, please stop. It's truly an awful thing to do and damages people more than you realize. If you take anything away from this video, please let it be that. And with that said, let's get back to the movie. Jamie escapes the little twerps thanks to her sister Rachel, who's headed to a store nearby to buy costumes to go trick-or-treating. The only problem is Rachel's scared to see her crush who works at the store, this magnificent hunk of a man named Brady. And while Rachel and her boo break off to do the dirty, that's illegal. Jamie works on picking out a costume of her own, and it goes about as well as you'd expect. Jamie, what happened? F you, f you, f you, f you, and kiss my 
So yeah, that was rough. Meanwhile, back with Loomis, he tries to hitch a ride since his car, you know, exploded. And doesn't this just look like a guy you'd love to drive into town? But luckily there's a crazy old coot just drunk enough to give him a lift. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Would you like a drink? Yes, we'll gather at the river. Motherfucker. May God have mercy on your soul. Fast forward to Halloween night, when Rachel and Jamie go trick-or-treating, while someone stalks them and slips into the house. But our boy Loomis isn't going to take this lying down, as he makes it to town himself and alerts the authorities of the madness that awaits. Soon after, the girls are busy grabbing some candy when Rachel discovers Brady cheating on her with Kelly, the sheriff's daughter who uses her assets to get what she wants. That's f***ing illegal. Meanwhile, in a local bar, a news broadcast instructs all businesses to shut down and everyone to go home and lock the goddamn doors. But when the crusty bar owner named Earl calls the police station to ask why, there's no one there to answer the phone. So the drunken idiots take matters into their own hands by saddling up in their oversized trucks and speeding to equip their muskets. Fire! Things further escalate when best friends Loomis and Sheriff investigate Jamie's house, where they discover something unconscionable. He's been here. How do you know? That son of a bitch Myers killed Sunday! Jeez, man. It's gonna take me a minute to get through this, but I guess if there's any silver lining to this f***ed up situation, it's that we still got power. You know, the lights are on, internet's fired up. We'll be okay as long as... Hey you, the city property, no trespassing. What are you, deaf? Don't try that Halloween shit with me. He rock a brick, put it in the press, then it can diddy teeth. That's f***ing illegal. God damn it, we've lost power. Anyway, Rachel somehow lost track of Jamie because all she could think about was Brady banging Kelly. And now we've got a serious situation on our hands. on your own at night again, okay? Not ever. Station, this is 132. All right. I guess they didn't notice Michael standing directly behind the squad car. This guy's one slick son of a the heroes then head back to the police station to check on how the squad's holding up, but it's more accurate to say they're holding it down, face down, in a pool of blood that covers the entire precinct. There ain't another lawman alive for 30 miles now thanks to Michael goddamn Myers, so it seems like we're gonna need some more heroes if we're gonna take this rat bastard out. What the hell did this? It was Michael Myers. You son of a We're gonna fry his ass. There he is! I seen his face. Right there in those bushes. Shit, Earl. It's Ted Hollister. It's murder. It's murder. Well, now that Ted's dead, I see why the sheriff didn't want the town drunks on the job. Anyway, the only place left in town that hasn't been massacred is the sheriff's creepy old house, so they turn it into a fort by securing the doors and windows. Hopefully that'll keep them safe from Michael Myers. Well, 
But what's even more sinister is that backstabbing <laughs> Kelly, who's been shagging Rachel's boyfriend behind her back. And Rachel's not gonna stand for it any longer as she takes matters into her own hands. Have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after, Loomis decides to leave because he's bored, and the sheriff leaves to deal with the lynch mob that shot Ted dead. So now the only thing standing between the killer and the kids is this dumbass deputy. But as long as he stays topped off on coffee, things will probably be just fine. I thought you might like some coffee. Who the fuck said that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I really shouldn't laugh. But this dude just rammed a shotgun through somebody's gut. Why even do that when you can just... Michael's kind of a weird dude. Things only get worse when Rachel and Brady try to flee the scene. But the front door is magically locked from the outside. And the shotgun can't even blast through it because the doorknob is made of metal. It's metal. We're trapped in this house. house. And all the hoopla pisses off Myers, who prefers other people to be silently face down. But what he doesn't know is that it's Brady's time to shine, as the young man steps up to prove he's a f***ing legend. Surprise, surprise. Everybody's a hero until Myers gets in range. Luckily, the girls are able to stage a rooftop escape, but the two get separated when Rachel takes a dive. And as Michael closes in on the target, Loomis grabs Jamie and they hide in a nearby schoolhouse. We'll hear some sirens soon. Then we'll be safe? <laughs> yeah. Go! Put them on ponies, run through problems, stop a bullet, jump over obstacles, stop my grind, life stop sunshine, so improbable, probable, mission impossible. Handle it. I don't know about you, Earl, but that makes sense to me. Let's get the hell out! Well, I've never been happier to see a group of smelly drunks. And now that our heroes have a ride out of town, all they've got to do is stay mobile until the cavalry arrives with some extra firepower. Yep, seems like it's smooth sailing from here. God. That was a lot of damage. But if you know anything about Michael, then you know it's merely a flesh wound. 
Halloween 4 didn't change the game, but it's well played nonetheless. The series as a whole is one of my favorite October pastimes, and it's perfect for a spooky night with a bowl of popcorn. Just make sure you lock the doors to keep the boogeyman from getting inside. I'm Cringe Conrad, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below.